Hello, I'm Andrew Kelly from Bristol Festival of Ideas. For this conference, we interviewed two mayors in two American cities to look at their experience of developing a guaranteed income. Our first interview is with Mayor Libby Schaff of the city of Oakland. Thank you, Mayor Schaff, for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about why you think a guaranteed income, a universal basic income, is important? I think poverty is not necessary and it's caused more by policies than by individual failures. We know that currently people are working, especially in the expensive San Francisco Bay Area where Oakland resides, and that they cannot afford to go to bed at night with that basic security of knowing that they can keep a roof over their heads and food on their, fam uh, on their table for themselves and their families. And the idea of a guaranteed income is ancient from Sir Thomas More to MLK. It is a direct attack on poverty that is effective and efficient. Tell us about Oakland then, because you're part of the, the Mayors for a Guaranteed Income and they talk about each city being different, obviously, or each place being different. But but, and, but there are some commonalities. But, but tell us about Oakland, because I read in one interview you talked about the systemic challenges you face there, whether that's gentrification, poverty, inequality, homelessness. Yeah. Oakland has an extremely high cost of living, and it is pushing individuals who have called Oakland home for generations out of our city. And a guaranteed income is also a really powerful tool to address racial inequalities. When you look at the disparities in economic well-being, it is clear that there is a, race, a racialized cause of those disparities. In Oakland, I have three times the number of African-American and Latinx families that are living in poverty. The average median income for white families is three times that of black and brown families in Oakland. That racial disparity tells us that our current systems are not working well for everyone. And what better way to solve for that problem than simply giving people unconditional cash? The government cannot know everyone's unique circumstances that is keeping them from economic mobility. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, in Oakland, we have a program called Keep Oakland Housed that helps people that are at risk of losing their housing. And, and it doesn't just provide rent payments, but it literally looks at that family's situation to see what they need a, a cash for to put them back into housing security. And one of the first households that we helped was a household of an adult man who was developmentally disabled, but he was the sole breadwinner supporting his very elderly mother. But their washing machine had broke. And because of that, he was unable to keep his work uniform clean, causing him to be suspended, causing him to lose income, causing them to fall behind on their rent and their bills. So not only did this one-time cash payment help them catch up on what was owed, but we also bought them a washing machine. Now, there are no governmental programs that I know of that buy washing machines. We also have gotten to a point where our social safety net almost requires people to demonstrate how deficient they are rather than trusting them, giving them the dignity to chart their own path to financial security. I've been so inspired by the work that Mayor Tubbs has done in Stockton that has demonstrated that with that added cash through a guaranteed income, that supplement, many people have been able to quit that third job and take that time either to better support their families or to actually apply for higher paying, more stable jobs, to actually increase their economic security, to take some classes, to upskill. So there is every piece of evidence that demonstrates that guaranteed income is a better accelerator to financial security and mobility than the current failed social safety net system. 
as when I um, looked into the work you were doing, I'm very impressed with all of those programmes that, that you, you talked about and, and, and shocked, really, I don't suppose one shouldn't be shocked too much these days, but when you, you uh, I read that 40% of Americans can't even weather a, a $400 economic crisis. I mean, this is something which, which has a huge impact, obviously. But, but it's also about, isn't it, this is about dealing with the, the way work might change in the future and actually helping people navigate through not just the systemic failures but also you know we're in a very different world like the pandemic and climate change and so on well the pandemic has shown us that we cannot rely on this economy to provide work for everyone at all times and it is not because people don't want the dignity the purpose of work it is simply the ups and downs, the roller coaster of our global economy. And having a guaranteed income assures everyone that there is a way to get through moments like the one that we're in right now. And that helps everyone to assure an a income floor where everyone can at least have a chance of getting their basic needs met in the long term saves money it is actually efficient in america we have so many uninsured or underinsured people getting their primary care in our very expensive emergency rooms just as an aside i'm also the co-founder of mayors for medicare for all a call for universal health coverage which is another clear lesson of this pandemic but what better way to address poverty and income inequality than universal basic guaranteed income? Uh, now, just, just to clarify, a lot of people talk about basic income, the idea that everybody gets the same check. Um, this coalition of mayors is very clear about preferring guaranteed income, which is targeted to those who need it the most. And that, that was a point of distinction I wanted to, to, to seek clarification on, so, so thank you for that. As a member of, of Mayors for, for Guaranteed Income, you, you, you stress the importance of pilots and there are some pilots underway. Um, you've talked about pilots in Oakland. Where, what's the position of the, of the pilots in Oakland at the moment? Well, I'm very excited. We certainly are courting a number of national funders because we cannot pay for this out of our poor little city revenues. But public-private partnerships with a clear intention to gather evidence that will support policy changes, preferably at the federal level, but as a backup, California has been a lot more bold and willing to experiment and take care of its people. But this demonstration in Oakland is in partnership with an amazing nonprofit called the Family Independence Initiative that really has lifted up the assets, the social capital of people that others would label as poor, but as we should see as de deserving of economic mobility. We are planning to focus our pilot in Oakland on families, so households that have children living in them. Uh, we believe that this kind of investment that helps give that financial security to parents and their children in their early years can possibly pay an extra dividend. And there is some policy appetite for this kind of approach. California recently added a young child's earned income tax credit. So refunding money to working poor families that have that added responsibility of children. And have you worked out yet how much you might be paying to, in the pilot? And I mean, I, uh, different figures seem to exist in different pilot studies around the world, really, not alone, let alone what, what's, what's happening in the United States. Well, it's a frustrating problem to have because we are in one of the most expensive areas in the world to live. The San Francisco Bay Area, which is also part of Silicon Valley, has extreme income inequality and a shortage of housing that has really driven particularly housing costs up sky high. At the same time, we know that so many families are suffering, particularly during this pandemic and the economic shutdown that it has caused. And so we certainly are grappling with um, the set amount of money 
do we give a smaller amount to benefit more families or a larger amount to fewer families? My guess is that we are probably gonna land around $500 a month for 300 families for an 18 month period. Now we're hopeful that it will be so successful that other funders will want to support this endeavor. And of course, the big goal is to secure a permanent source of public dollars. We cannot charity our way out of problems like poverty. They have to be solved through policy changes and intentional investments by the public sector. But that is what our evidence and our pilots are designed to prove. And I think it is phenomenal that mayors from all over the United States, very diverse communities. I mean, Shreveport, Louisiana, does not have a whole lot in common with Oakland, California, but we are both committed to guaranteed income. And we're both gonna learn different lessons. And the fact that we are in this kind of learning community together is going to paint a very comprehensive picture, particularly for our federal government, about what works everywhere and why this is such a compelling idea whose time has come. Just, just a couple of other questions, just, just on this. I mean, do you see this becoming, are you optimistic that this is going to become a major part of a, of a political platform in the future at the, at the federal level? I am optimistic. Uh, you know, America is suffering right now over just intense partisan deadlock. And it's very frustrating. Although that is a place where I think mayors can particularly shine. Um, you know, we often, are not partisan, our, our positions are often not partisan. And because we are in the communities dealing with people's day-to-day -day problems, uh, we often agree on so much. It's interesting in the United States, the closest the federal government ever got to a guaranteed income was a proposal by Richard Nixon. <laughs> so this really should not be a partisan issue. It's a very efficient and effective investment. Now. I like it as a progressive Democrat because I believe it is going to be the most effective way to address racial disparities and injustice. But honestly, it should be appealing to uh, people from throughout the political spectrum because of its simplicity and efficiency. And, and one of the, the criticisms often leveled at this, we certainly get this in, in the United Kingdom, is that A, this will displace other social benefits, social payments that people have, um, and B, that it will be ultimately unaffordable. But I guess that's the point of these pilots, isn't it? Just to, to begin to work through some of these issues. That's right. I think the pilots can demonstrate that we cannot afford to keep people in poverty. There's a tremendous cost, not only you know a dollar cost to public systems, but a human capital cost. Think of all the talent, the brilliance that is not benefiting our whole society because of these policy barriers that keep people from actually fulfilling their promise to actually rise on that economic ladder of opportunity. That is hurting all of us. We all stand to benefit when we create an income floor that takes care of people's basic needs so they actually can flourish and contribute to society. Well, it's not a new idea, but an idea whose time has come, uh, you, as you say. Thank you very much, Mayor Schaff, for joining us from Oakland, and we wish you all the best with your work with Mayors for a Guaranteed Income. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, and big greetings and love to Bristol.